the next plant I'd like to talk about is one of my favorite plants, not just as a medicine, but as a plant I just like to be around and gather. And that plant is skullcap. The genus of skullcap is Scutellaria. Scut, like if you know your turtle anatomy, and I'm sure many of you out there do know your turtle anatomies, the scut is like a piece of the outside shell that, if, uh, if you look at turtles, there's segments of the, the shells, and each segment of that shell is called a scut. So what does scutellaria and the scut of a turtle shall have to do? And that is, in Latin, scut means plate. And so why is skullcap scutellaria have the word plate? And the reason is the protuberance, or the little piece sticking up on the skullcap calyx. So when, if you go from here and look at the photo of skullcap, you'll see uh, the little plate that sticks up on the calyx, which actually is very obvious and very useful for identification of scutellarias. So the plant is skullcap, the genus is scutellaria, and there are many species of scutellaria in the United States, and probably in Canada. I'm not sure about how far south they go, probably somewhat south. The family is the Lamiaceae, the mint family, sometimes called the Labiate or Labiate family. Uh, it's actually a, northern, a more northern family, the mint family. That's what they are, the mints. Are, tend to be a more northern temperate uh, family. So skullcap is one of them. Uh, not the easiest plant to identify when it's young until you start to really get a sense of it. It looks a lot like lycopis or bugleweed, which they're in the same family. Uh, but you're most likely going to gather skullcap when it's in flower. And when it's in flower, it's easy to tell because it has the little scoot, that little protuberance, <laughs> my finger doesn't do it justice, on top of the calyx. Uh, what species to use? Uh, my friends like Joshua Muscat, uh, an herbalist in the Bay Area, uh, he likes the species that grow out there and he uses them a lot. He's a big skullcap fan. For me, I use the species that grows here more, which is Scutellaria lateriflora. Uh, and that's kind of the official skullcap, but it seems like many skullcap species work. And Kiva Rose, oh, I'm forgetting the species, Kiva Rose uses the skullcap it might be Scutellaria resinosa. If I'm incorrect, we'll just re put it somewhere else and correct it. And that grows around her uh, in the southwest deserts. And so Kiva calls skullcaps uh, blisswort. And so that seems apparent why she would call them blisswort. So if you want to see more information about skullcap in Kiva's lecture, she's also done things for herbmentorlearningherbs.com. I'd recommend her information as well. So three, I guess there, so we have Joshua in California using his skullcap, Kiva Rose in the southwest in New Mexico, and me over here in the east. And all of us really like the scutellarias that grow near us. And so I recommend getting to know the scutellarias that grow near you and giving them a try for all the things we're going to talk about with skullcap. Uh, the parts used, most of the plant works. Uh, it depends on how thick the stems are in general. Skullcaps have pretty thin stems, and so really the whole above ground part of the plant, so not the roots, but the above ground parts, are the medicinal part. That said, you do have to take wild crafting ethics into consideration. Skullcaps are, all the ones I know are native, and you don't want to just gather them willy-nilly. You know, you want to make sure that you leave lots of skullcaps to receive themselves. So gen they tend to be annuals, or at least Scutellaria lateriflora, the northeastern skullcap, which also grows in the northwest, by the way, uh, is a native. So make sure that you know over harvesting or, uh, your skull caps. Learn how much they are and where to find them. Uh, the one out here likes to grow in wet places. So uh, once a year, in August, I go to my special wild crafting skull cap spot, and I gather the skull caps. I pick, you know, I just I walk a couple of miles and pick plants out and get a bunch, and then I blend it. So I chop it up, the skull cap. Sometimes I blend it, sometimes I chop it up. It cuts really easy, and I tincture it one to two, 95% fresh. Skullcap though, so I use the fresh above ground plant tincture for medicine, but I wanna say that the dried plant for tea works. And the reason I'm reiterating that or iterating that is for years, I didn't think dried skullcap did very much. And then working in the Ithaca Free Clinic, um, I just needed nervines more often, which is what skullcap does. And all I had a lot of at that point was dried tea, and people loved it. A lot of people came back for the dried skullcap. So it's also useful as a tea. So now let's talk about uses. Uh, skullcap fits an array of uses. And I would say that its main use in my mind is as a nervine. 
So nervines are herbs that nourish the nervous system, as opposed to sedatives that kind of lower people's excitability level or anxiety level down. Skullcap can do that, but I really like Skullcap for people to take regularly who have a tendency to fly off the handle, to get overexcitable for whatever overexcitable is for them, and to take it regularly. Uh, so one way of saying that is for people who are more worry warts. Another way for that are people who can just really, I guess, worry warts who just get tight and stuck. And uh, when, situations get, uh, when situations get condensed and it's hard to think of a way out, so not, they could use it then, but more regularly. So that kind of situation, that kind of getting stuck happens a little bit less. But I think anybody can benefit from Skullcap, honestly. So I, while I sometimes paint these patient pictures, these energetic constitutional pictures or personality pictures, um, I really, I think that any dosha, any type of person, if Skullcap works for them. So personally, Skullcap does nothing for me. I've, one year I decided to eat like 15 plants. I mean, eat the plants. I figured if anything is going to work. And I have very little effect from Skullcap. I didn't taste that terrible. There's a lot of plants to eat. The reason I'm saying that is not so much telling you that uh, you cannot harm me with Skullcap if you want to put me to sleep at a conference. I'm saying don't judge how a plant works by how it affects you. Because many people love Skullcap. Kiva Rose is not calling Skullcap bliss wart for no reason at all. So it's important to understand that it's, and so that means so for her, someone like Kiva, that it works for her doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. It's just important to take it out of personal context and experiment and ask people how skull caps work or how any plant works. So I like skull cap as a nourishing nervine. So who do I give it to in first aid? I give it to my compatriots, the people I'm working with, before they get into the first aid situation to take it regularly. So the students that come with me to these things who haven't worked in first aid and get very tight and nervous and overwhelmed in their head, I like to start them in skull cap, whatever the dose is. It could be anywhere from a few drops once a day to a couple of dropperfuls many times a day. Again, the skull cap, the dosage of skull cap is from very small amounts here and there to very large amounts very regularly. It just depends on how it works for you. Skullcap itself, as long as it's not adulterated, is that, seems to me a very non-toxic plant. In other words, while some people might have effects from it that they don't like, uh, I don't know if I know anybody who's gotten sick from it, has vomited or got terrible headaches. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, I uh, can probably say probably somebody's gotten headaches, but that's not a toxic reaction. So to kind of come back to the point, no toxic reaction, like no crazy negative body problem that went on for a long time after they took the skull cap. So a pretty safe herb that way. Some people it doesn't do much to. And then there are some people where a couple of drops of skull cap will work as a sedative. So a sedative is different than a nervine. People take sedatives when you're kind of in the th throes of it to kind of bring your energy level down, to calm you. And for some people, skull cap works really well that way. The other thing about skull cap is that it's a skeletal muscle relaxant. So when I talked about black cohosh as a skeletal muscle relaxant, I talked to one of my favorite three herbs making up a skeletal muscle relaxant is particularis, which we haven't covered, black cohosh and skull cap in equal proportions. So the particularis, the Laos wart, same names, and the black cohosh are very specific for skeletal muscle relaxing. And I think the skull cap just adds some oomph to it and also maybe more in the mind. So the body relaxes and the mind relaxes from the pain associated with skeletal muscle pain. So like, let's say lower or upper back pain. Uh, so very helpful there. So, so skull cap is useful both as a sedative and a nervine. Some people also use it as a sleep aid. The technical word for sleep aid is a hypnotic. And for some people it will help. I think it works best though as taking regularly as a nourishing nervine tonic and then just taking more as necessary to reduce anxiety or to help people sleep. Again, the dosage is everywhere. So skull cap, I carry, I tend to carry a big bottle of skull cap with me, like a four ounce or eight ounce in my first aid bag. The reason is skull cap often will work. You just need uh, much larger amounts of it. So I really like skull cap and I also feel like it augments other herbal relaxing formulas. So I will use it with black cohosh as a skeletal muscle relaxant. 
I might use it for, with valerian as a sleep aid. I might use it at, for, at, with passion flower for somebody who's really caught up in the moment and can't relax. So skullcap augments and helps um, other herb formulas work a little better. So I'm just a huge fan of skullcap in this way. So nourishing the nervous system, um, augmenting other formulas, and also taking enough necessary to reduce people's uh, taking enough necessary uh, to help just lower people's threshold of anxiety, or just really not threshold, but just lowering anxiety, lowering stress. You just need to give large amounts. I don't think of skullcap particularly good for physical pain in the sense of, I don't think it helps so much like stopping the pain, right? Some things are more anodyne, stopping pain. I think of skullcap as helping relax the person so the pain is less tense in their body. So I definitely use skullcap in pain formulas. I use it with Pisidia, Jamaican dogwood. I use it with California poppy. I use it with wild lettuce. But I often think in my mind, the skullcap is more about reducing the tension associated with pain, because pain has that as an aspect to it, uh, than just reducing the pain by itself. So I hope you have a sense of how to use skullcap. I would recommend carrying larger amounts of skullcap tincture. A good fresh plant tincture is the way that I would recommend it, whatever species you use. And um, just try it with different people. If it doesn't work for a few people, Skullcap works fantastic for certain people. So it's a matter of just finding out who it works for and then bringing it with you and suggesting that herb to those folks. Mm -hmm.